welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing great and having an awesome day. And by the way, welcome back to my room. I feel like it's been so long since we like gathered around in my room and we're all like kumbaya and hanging out. Like, I don't know, that's how I always feel when we're in my room. Like we're all like gathered around and sitting down to talk, but we've just been filming like workout videos in my living room and like kitchen videos and just all over so yeah it's nice to kind of just be here sitting with you guys a lot of you guys on snapchat have been you know privately messaging me and youtube comments too but especially on snapchat i get a lot of messages with how to prevent a binge um you know problems with i go to school all day and then i come home and i eat everything in the kitchen uh and i feel like you know i'm binge eating because I'm eating more than I should be eating and I'm eating a ton of different things all at once and you know just crazy and then I feel bad about myself afterwards and yeah I, I definitely want to talk about this. The first thing I want to talk about is my experience with binge eating. For the longest time I never even knew that that's what it was called or that's what I used to do but because I have done more research on fitness and stuff and when I started reading about binge eating I was like wait that sounds a lot like what I used to do um, and it wasn't last year and it wasn't the year before and it wasn't as an adult it was when I was 12 and it was when I was in dance school and you know at the time wanting to be a professional ballerina or something I don't know I don't really know what I was gonna do with that but I decided like this is what I want to do and I always had big boobs I just always did and I read the boobs were fat so I thought if I go on a diet then I'll lose weight in my boobs and I didn't realize that you can't it doesn't always work that way but that's what I told myself um and so I would think all these bad things about my body you know ballerinas aren't supposed to have big boobs and I would I would, I would think about all bad things about myself and it, it resulted in low self-esteem and, and not liking myself at such a young age at only 12 when I should have been out playing and stuff like that and I was sitting here worried that my boobs were too big for ballet costumes and my mom was really good about that always having healthy foods in the house and carrot sticks and um, all like other snacks that she would make but I would always find a way to eat the bad stuff that we would buy like we, my mom always had Oreos she always had um, Elio's pizza like frozen pizza like stuff that like you know if she got home late or something just like easy things to make but I would eat them all at once because I felt so negative about myself I felt like I hated my boobs and I hated my body and it was stopping me from doing things that I wanted to do um, and that that's what would result that would make me feel better when I got home is that I would just eat everything and in a way I was practicing the law of attraction when I was 12 and we always talk about the law of attraction on my channel which if you're unfamiliar with it it's, it's basically like like attracts like the more you think about something the more you do it and the more it's attracted into your life and one thing that I would always tell myself when I was in school and stuff is when I get home I'm not gonna eat bad I just won't do it I'm not gonna eat bad and what would I do? I'd get home and eat bad. So instead of filling my brain with, oh, I, I want to, you know, cook with my mom or I want I want to cook with my grandma and make healthy food and, you know, and telling myself good and positive things, I was sitting there going, I'm not going to do this anymore because I feel bad after I do and then I can't sleep at night because I feel like, you know, it's going to affect my dancing and like, you know, it was, it was way too much stress for a 12 year old. And what ended up happening with that, like this is a whole nother side note, but what, end, what ended up happening with that is that the next year at 13, that was the first year I didn't do dance. Um, I then got back into dance when I was in high school at 14 and continued and graduated at 18, graduated from my dance school and everything. But um, at 13, I did take a break because I said to my mom, this doesn't make me feel good. <laughs> like, I'm not happy with this. And I realized that I, I couldn't just change what was genetically there. You know, I, I genetically have big boobs. I, I couldn't change that unless like I got like surgery or something. So I made the connection like, you know what, dance like, does it, this isn't, if this isn't how I feel about dance class, then I can't, I can't do that. And then I remember I got into art and I got into film and I got into all other kind of stuff and that made me happy. And once I had a good positive relationship with dance, I went back I felt the joy and happiness again. So that's sort of like my little story that I just wanted to share with you guys is that once you kind of get to the root of why you do it, that is a great starting point. So I realized ballet was sort of a trigger point for me and the dance, I ended up not going back to that dance school by the way, I found a different dance school that was like less intense and less competitive and all of that and I think that's the, the one of the best things you can do is what triggers this? Is there a certain thing or a person or a situation that triggers me to hate my body? You know, is it me? Am I my own worst enemy? So that would be my step one to everybody that also might be struggling with binge eating is what triggers 
you to have that low self-esteem feel or have that feel that, you know, you need to change something instantly. You know, what, what is that? What is your trigger? The second thing that I want to talk about, and this is something that I read on and it, it made complete sense to me, is that when you've been gone for a long time, so say you went to school or work and you get home and you're absolutely, you have that absolute starving feeling. You're like, oh, I'm so hungry. And like, you could, you're like, I could eat a horse. I can eat everything. And you come home and maybe you eat a bunch of different things in your house. And you're like, why did I do that? Like, yeah, one thing would have been fine, but like I went crazy. And one thing I read about that with binge eating is it's a survival thing that, you know, back in the caveman era, that's what they did. Like once they got their hands on food, they ate a ton because they didn't know when their next meal would be. So they had to feast when they could um, and fast when they couldn't find food, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I didn't read too much into it, but yeah, that's, that's a survival thing that us humans have that when we're hungry, you know, our eyes are bigger than our stomach and, you know, we go crazy. And one thing to prevent that, and it's very easy, is to meal prep. And meal prepping doesn't just have to be in your house, but it could also be thinking, you know what, why don't I bring a snack on the go with me? You know, why don't I bring some carrot sticks and maybe some hummus to dip uh, and bring that with me or a protein shake or a smoothie or a protein bar or even like an apple or just like something, why don't I bring something in the car? Um, I always have nuts in my car, like I keep them in my car actually because it happens. Like you could be out doing one thing and realize, oh my gosh, I have to do this, I have to do this and all of a sudden you get home and you're you're so hungry. Now the next thing I want to talk about is perhaps for the person that is new on their fitness journey and you you see that every time you go to eat healthy, you decide to eat bad or um, you know, go on a binge in, in your kitchen or out or whatever, but you're new on your fitness journey, you haven't really found like that consistency yet. Eat the things you already nor <laughs> already I can't talk, I'm like all time tied. Eat the things you normally would, but make the healthier option. A big thing on my channel is a lot of you guys know I like to eat lower in carbs. I don't count them or anything, it's just like an intuitive thing. Like I, I don't have dinner rolls, I don't have bread, um, unless it's cheat day. I do take a cheat day on Saturday. And something that I found is that you can still eat the things you normally would, even like cutting out bread and stuff. If you normally have a turkey and cheese sandwich or a tuna sandwich every day, you can make lettuce wraps or you can find wraps that are actually healthy for you or they have like these veggie wraps now that like have veggies in them. and. Um, Ezekiel bread and there's a lot of things you could do like ask yourself like what do I normally like eating if it's pizza well I have a mushroom pizza in my meal plan like if you can actually say okay I want to eat the things I normally eat then how can I get creative with it you know how can I make this the healthier option and this is kind of going back with the trigger points again like we talked about earlier but it's to find a new routine sometimes you have to say you know if this hasn't worked for me and it, it's a huge trigger for me then I gotta start a new routine so one thing that I guess in a way could be a, a trigger point for me is you know watching TV and eating because that was kind of my outlet when I was younger is I would sit at home watch TV do my homework uh, eat and you know the TV now makes me home as weird as that is or you know you go to the movies you have popcorn I associate TV with eating so one thing that I've changed up is that's a different routine for me now um, when I'm cooking and I cook with my boyfriend and there's like you know it's our, our routine and we watch TV while we cook so for me just changing that simple routine of not eating and watching TV instead changing it with watching TV while cooking or watching TV while straightening up the kitchen after cooking because there's always dishes and stuff um, and that has dramatically changed how I view TV and how I view my eating patterns and once you kind of dig deep and change things around you'll see it's not that hard to stick with something and you make your life a lot easier. That's really everything I want to talk about and I guess the last note I want to leave you on is Having high self-esteem is so important, especially at a young age. You know, high self-esteem is just, it's better for life. You feel better about life. You feel better about you. And, you know, you can be your own cheerleader on your fitness journey rather than, you know, negative reinforcement and you're fat and like telling yourself like all things that are not true because that doesn't, that doesn't work long term. If you want to actually stay in shape forever and, you know, this be who you are, it's always gonna work better with kindness and love and all that good stuff. So I love you guys so much. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Snapchat because I always post behind the scenes there and other meal ideas and stuff like that. Also check out my website. I have a law of attraction guide you can download and a meal plan. So if you're looking to get more meal ideas, I got you. So have a great day everyone and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.